In most, if not all RPG games, skill trees are always one of the central systems for a game to work. It's one of the core mechanics that gives the feeling of progression and the feeling that the character you're playing is growing and becoming more powerful. Today, we'll do a deep dive into game design concepts on how the skill tree system works in our indie game Wisplight. It's a reverse RPG game where we play as a wisp that can transform into different monster types, with the goal of eliminating humans invading your island home. If you're interested in following our development, feel free to subscribe to get updates. Let's begin! Years of gaming made me realize that most skill trees in games that we know always start with the question of how do we level up, or how do we get points to spend on our skill trees. And most of these skill points rely on experience systems where you will gain experience as you eliminate enemies, or complete a certain quest, or if you get a specific item that gives you these points. There are also some games that rely on how often you use a specific skill, and that skill or ability will level up if you use it more frequently, mastering it. For example, in Valheim, when you run more often, you will increase your running skill making you faster in time. Or in Skyrim, where the more you use your sneak abilities, the more you will master it making you totally invisible. For our game Wisplight, we want to incorporate a unique way of leveling, and these leveling systems must be influenced with other key gameplay mechanics. And these are 1. Exploration We want to reward players that explore the area, and exploration is a huge part of our semi-open world game Wisplight. We will have caves, dungeons, ancient ruins, and settlements scattered around the island. 2. Combat a core gameplay mechanic for Wisplight is our intricate battles with super smart enemies with behaviors that will make them team up together to bring you, the monster, down. I want to make our difficult combat mechanic rewarding enough for players to take risk and fight. And one way to make the fight worth it is to give the player a chance to earn a skill point for every battle won. 3. Puzzles You'll have puzzles, especially in ancient ruins that will reward a player with skill points for every puzzle or obstacle solved. And lastly, settlement expansions. In our game Wisplight, one of our long-term goals is to expand our territories by taking human settlements, and this is also one of the ways in getting skill points. We want to reward players that expand and take care of their territories. So again, we have four gameplay mechanics in our game that we need to incorporate a skill system for our skill tree. And the first thing in our mind when we talk about skill is how we get them. So let's start with exploration. In our game Wisplight, there's only one way to gain skill points. And the only way to gain it is to merge with other Wisp roaming around the island. For every Wisp that merges with you, that's one skill point for you to use in your skill tree. And for our first gameplay mechanic, exploration, we can simply make this happen by spawning events where we can encounter lost wisps roaming around the forest. And our goal is to catch up with them and merge with them. Another example is exploring caves and dungeons. There are times that we will encounter other monsters from the island, and this will give us events that will lead to an opportunity to merge with them, maybe fight them, and they'll merge with you if you win. Next is combat. In our game's lore, wisps are highly prized in this world, since they are catalysts for amplifying magic. With the high demand for Wisp, you are hunted by several human factions. And as you explore the island, there are times that you will encounter these hunters, and you will have battles with them. After you defeat them, you will get an opportunity to free the Wisp that they've hunted and captured, merging with you, giving you a new skill point. There are also times when you encounter powerful wizards that have Wisp as catalyst in their staff. And if you defeat these wizards, you'll have the opportunity to free the wisp from their staff. Settlement boss fights will also give you a lot of captured wisps when you defeat a settlement boss. For chapter 1 of our game, we'll have 3 settlement bosses that we need to defeat to complete chapter 1. We have the necromancer, found in one of the dungeons. The slave driver, who's the overseer of the slave mines the captain of the tree hunters found in the forest encampment. After defeating these boss battles and liberating and taking over the settlements, you'll free the captured wisps or monsters in the area. For our next gameplay mechanic, puzzles. There will be ancient ruins scattered around the island, and in these ancient ruins you'll find contraptions that you'll have the opportunity to solve. These contraptions hide with them ancient knowledge that we can acquire to unlock skills in the skill tree. Sometimes, some of these contraptions also store trapped and crystallized wisps frozen in time. Solving these puzzles will free these ancient wisps or knowledge. 
or maybe sometimes free an ancient enemy that you need to face in battle with. Now for our last gameplay mechanic, Settlement Expansions. Part of the long-term gameplay loop for Wisplite is the settlement and territory capturing gameplay. There will be several settlements throughout the island and are inhabited by humans. And as you raid these settlements, you will have an option to take over and conquer the settlement for yourself. To conquer these settlements, you'll need certain NPCs to help you with this. Like Cassandra, your companion. And Francis, Cassandra's friend who help her escape her captors. Francis will play as your blacksmith and builder, and he'll manage your settlement buildings. As you conquer your settlements, you will have options to upgrade parts of it. For example, if you conquer the Tree Hunter's forest encampment, you will have an option to build a watchtower for additional defense. Or you can expand your settlement's resource production of wood planks by building sawmills. As you expand your settlement and as your settlement grows, there will come a time that some nearby monsters and wisps will go to your settlement and offer themselves to help in your territory. This is also one way to get skill points since managing your settlements needs wisps assigned to specific tasks in the settlement. For example, if you want to gather wood, you need to assign wisp to your lumber yard and sawmill, and this will remove points from your skill tree so that you can assign these points to your settlements. Basically, the unique gameplay for Wisplight is managing whether you want to be a powerful skilled monster or you want to diversify your merged wisp, remove them from your skill tree, and assign them to work on your settlements to support your territory and resource production, which are essential in progressing the game. Alright, now that we tackled how we level up in the game, let's now talk about the skill tree itself. Let's start with the design. So basically, we got inspiration from the skill tree that's used by Path of Exile, but a bit more simpler and less complex. Let's start by designing the skill nodes. We'll have different skill nodes in our skill tree, and they have different functions. Let me demonstrate these skill nodes by illustrating them in this mind map that I made. First, we have our active skill nodes. These nodes are skills that you need to activate in the game for you to use it. Some examples are our dodge ability for our skeleton, or our healing skill, or attack combos for our armor. Basically, any action that needs to be pressed is an active skill. And these are represented in our mind map by these circular bordered nodes. Then we have our passive skill nodes. These nodes are upgrade nodes for our active skill or upgrades for our stats. For example, we have our Fortitude, Essence, and Stability nodes that increase our basic stats. We also have passive nodes for damage reduction for our shield, or we have passive nodes for our sprinting speed, our essence consumption, stability reduction, and so on. Basically, it's an upgrade skill that improves our active skills and stats, and these are represented in our mind map by these rectangular bordered nodes. Then, we have item nodes. These are nodes that unlock a huge part of the skill tree. And the only way to unlock these nodes is not by putting merge wisp points into them, but by acquiring a specific item to give knowledge to our wisp on how to use the skills. For example, we have our Tomb Aspect of Death item. It's a book that you will get once you eliminate the first boss in Chapter 1, the Necromancer found in the dungeons. By acquiring this item, this will teach Cassandra basic necromancy and she will apply the skills written in the book to you, giving you the ability to conjure skeletons equip weapons and a shield. This node is important to lock progression and certain overpowered skills early in the game. Most of these items are found if you defeat certain boss enemies or solve ancient puzzles throughout the island. And this node is represented in our mind map by this semi-rounded node with a bold colored fill and this node is accompanied with skill nodes that look like this, a rounded node with lighter colored fill. This means that if you acquire the item, the skills also come with it, like a package. And lastly, we have our combined skill node. These nodes are a result of acquiring multiple knowledge or acquiring enough high tier level skills in your skill tree. For example, when we find the tomb Crystal Manipulation in Chapter 2 of our game, this will give us knowledge to use crystals and embed them in inanimate objects. This is the book that will teach us to conjure armor that's been embedded with crystals. Learning this book will also teach us a combined ability for our skeleton called Crystal Control, which will give our skeleton the ability to equip armor, increasing our fortitude and stability. This also gives us an active skill that lets us throw our sword towards the enemy, stunning them from afar and retracting the sword back at us instantly. And these combined skill nodes are represented in our mind map by this dashed border node. 
and is linked by two skill nodes, which are prerequisites for us to unlock this combined node. This means that you need to acquire two of the skill nodes to unlock this combined skill node. With these node types in place, we can now craft our skill tree, starting with our wisp to different monster types, including our tree creature, our skeleton, the armor, and so on. I'll share a link to our mind map in the description below so that you guys can see it and explore the skills that we will be having in Wisplite. I'll be updating this mind map as I go along with the development. So for the design, as of the moment, I still don't have the assets needed for the skill tree's UI, specifically our skills icon. And currently I hired and started working with a freelance UI artist to help me with our skill tree UI design. Basically, Wisplite is funded by my savings and hopefully YouTube when we get monetized. Some of our funding also comes from the community who subscribe to Patreon. So thank you so much for your support. For those of you guys who want to help the funding of Wisplite's assets, I'll leave a link in the description below. In our next devlog, we will start building the foundations for our skill tree system. Basically, we will make the skills controller for our skeleton and link our current skills to it. Till next time.